All right, guys. I think I have accomplished the unbelievable. Uh, <clears throat> I have got this to live stream on TradingView, and the video cards kicked in on my MacBook Pro right now too. Uh, and I've got this thing on uh, Zoom at the same time. So, sorry, I got like 500 different windows floating around on my computer. So I'm, this is the first time I've ever done all of them at the same time. All right, man, we got 16 people in on the Zoom. And I've got that over here. Hey, guys, Jamie, Gary, Federico, can I use your name today? And uh, I'm going to go over your trade today. <laughs> you knocked it out of the park, man. Big time knocked it out of the park. All right, now I think, yeah. It'll let us drag it over. Okay, first thing I want to. First thing on Zoom, you guys can read this. Um, everybody has the disclosure that this is for informational purposes only and education. Anything I go through is not trading advice. It's just for education. Uh, you can snap that and read it. But there you go. All right, I'm going, where did I, I had your, Puerto Rico, I had your uh, screenshot. Let me just pull it up real quick on Facebook. Thank you guys for taking the time uh, to attend tonight. This one should be pretty good. I'm gonna run through. All right. And of course, it won't let me drag it over. It's the first time using uh, live stream and trading view at the exact same time. Or, uh, excuse me, live stream on TradingView and Zoom at the same time. Eventually, these will just be on live stream only. Yeah, Jamie, you uh, the, today was an awesome freaking day on anything that you wanted to do. It was just, it just worked. When you have a, a nice trending day up or down, uh, you know, it makes a big difference. Well, it won't let me drag it over. So, Puerto Rico, I'm going to just show it on here as this. So, guys, today he pulled this trade off. If you look up here, I'm going to I'm going to delete everything off this page and go through like if it was new, um, just so you know. Uh, but our roller coaster software, I'm going to shut off bits for a second. And I'm going to take this channel off. Okay, this, Frederica was using a three minute chart with our roller coaster this morning and it gave an alert at 8.15 a.m. for a possible short. Now, if you look over here, there is a supply zone. Uh, now this is a three minute supply zone. It's on other levels as well, but I drew it out here in the purple. Uh, and we came up and hit it earlier in the morning. It was that probably eight. 15 minutes before we hit it, came back down. Now, if you guys watch my Wednesday webinars, I call it a stair step or the, the first notch. I do not, now every now and then, I will get burnt on one and it'll just come out and go. Like for instance, here's one right here. It came out and just zoomed off, all right? 
now sometimes I'll get back. Sometimes I'll get into that late to the game, but most of the time it it pulls back in and then comes back out. Look at this one here. And this is a prime example of why I don't take it on the first time out. It paints that first notch and then it pulls back and look what it did. It didn't come back to it. Now, if I did take it at the line, I put my stop loss one tick right past it. That way you protect some profit um, that's in there. Or it, not profit, you protect your position, it's a zero trade. If it stops you out, great. If it takes off like this right here where it takes off to the moon, uh, or you know, runs down 10 points, whatever you pull 40 ticks, you can protect more. It just CYA yourself. I put one uh, tick uh, protection on it if it takes off. That way, if it comes back like it did and then never comes back out, you don't have a losing trade on there. You, it's kind of like insurance to protect yourself. So we pop into here. Yes, Grant, I will go over the how to adjust the start bar number uh, on Elliott Wave. So we pulled up into that supply zone. It came back down and it popped out one, came back in here. Now it did pull back in again, but it didn't go lower than that second shelf. My entry is right here at the shelf is where I would get in at 30.9150. Now it came out of the 6.4 moving average. We came out below there. Your entry technically is below the 6.4 moving average of uh, using it, but I would take it here. He took it at, 3095.75. Awesome trade. Now, on top of that, it goes all the way down. Now, when we get down here to the bottom and it starts coming back up, I like to drop a channel from the top of the move. Let me see here. From the top of the move to the bottom of the move. If it breaks the outside of that channel, I'm going to get out of it. Now, if you look, on here, the outside of the channel is the 6.4 moving average blue line right there. So, I mean, it's to, to the tick uh, that it popped off out of there, came down and took off. Now, our software, let me take this um, regression trend off. This red line right here that's in between the two shades of green and kind of a gray or dark green, whichever, if you're colorblind, it's probably gray. Uh, but it's, it's a different shade of green, uh, gray color, but this red line that goes right through here is your stop loss that as it's moving down, you move your stop loss down with it, that it's right above it. it keeps going down. You have your stop loss right here. Didn't stop you out. Even, even on these pullbacks where they come up, these three pullbacks, fourth one almost stopped you out right there. And then this candle here stopped you out. That uh, massive freaking move, 3038 from 3095. Crazy. I think I figured it up a little bit ago at the stop loss, if I remember right, it's $3,800 a contract uh, for a full contract, which is nuts uh, on there. But let's add in bits on here. And we're gonna show you the, the other reason why he took this trade. If you did not have roller coaster, and this is one of the reasons why I love trading view is you can easily turn on and off stuff without having to delete it like you do on other platforms. Uh, part of your rules, you're looking down here, all right? This blue line is your cyan line. When it comes up and it crosses over the yellow, it is your signal to go short. Now, I don't take it until it's below the 6.4 moving average, which, and these purple dots right here are your point of control dots. That point of control dot is right there. If I can get my mouse, you can see it right here above the cursor. There's your point of control dot. I'm gonna hover right over it. 30, 95, 75. Cyan crossed over the bottom of the 6.4 moving average. One reason to go short. We're below the, uh, Cyan crossed over yellow is one reason. We're below the 6.4 moving average. There's two reasons. And we're below the point of control dots. There's three reasons. 
your higher time frame chart uh, bias dots right here is telling you the higher time frame charts are saying go short. Okay. Now you got the first signal, the bar before it, when we crossed through there, it pulled back up in there to almost touch that point of control dot and then came back out. Once it came out, you had your second. And then the oscillator here, if you see, went to almost nothing on that bar and then you got a red one. Uh, there's, so your dots is your fourth reason to go short. Green's gone down to almost nothing to, for a first red. There's five reasons to go short and your stochastic crossed over and you got your arrow that it's crossed over. You have six reasons to go short and absolutely zero reasons to not take this trade. And lo and behold, look where it went. That uh, we came back up, almost tested it again, came back up and there's your getting out. There was your stop out was this bar right here. The cyan almost crossed over and then it did over here. But turn back on roller coaster. You can see the how powerful using both of these are together. It, you're getting extra confirmation between all of them. So, wow, Jamie, that's cool. I, I don't do options. Uh, that's amazing. That uh, I was gonna say. Uh, now this is setting up for possibly a. Let's see. We're only on a three minute though. Possibly a, a wave five, but we'd have to, there's going to be too many bars. We'll have to re-isolate. Um, but let me show you how to isolate the wave five on the five minutes. Awesome. So actually, let's just do it. Let's look at a five minute that's on there. Yeah, that's going to say, I knew we we're probably close to another fifth wave move because typically the roller coaster long, big moves like that are third wave moves. And then when they stop out, that's typically, in which this was the four earlier, pulled back up and the four moved over here. Came close to moving over here, but so it's from there to there. That's on there. So here's your fifth wave move. Let's turn off roller coaster. And now I don't know where are we isolated from. We're on 20,644. And if you look over here, here is your bar count that says W5T bar number. 20, and what did I say? 20,644. So this is it's isolated back over here somewhere. But I can look at this. You're going to go to the high of the overnight session, which over there. I like this high right here. Um, we're just going to pick this one right here, which is bar number 20,708. So I'm going to hit the sprocket. 20,708 should give us the, it'll just eliminate the stuff to the left. And there we go. So we actually had multiple fifth wave moves here and I'm going to take this away this little button right here will give you full screen. So it came down with bits. There's your entry with bits again, even on five minutes. We came down, we're below the point of control dots. Uh, cyan crossed over the yellow. We're below the 6-4 moving average. So there's three reasons to go short right there. And then if you look below down here, we were green, green, yellow, green, boom. We hit one red there, yellow. And you look at your oscillator, it came back up. We got solid red, plus you got your crossover right here. So the oscillator going bigger for uh, going down, four reasons to go short. Bias dot, five reasons to go short. Stochastic crossed over, six reasons to go short. Uh, now out of that, if you know the Elliott wave, it paints five waves. The fifth wave is an 80 to 85% success rate when it pulls into the green. 75 uh, or 80 to 85 in the middle and then 75% uh, here in the red. But of course, we pulled into the uh, green and then came out, hit the fifth wave target and busted through it. Pulled back up which this actually fit, this fifth wave move became a three 
because this was the three, pulled back and this was the four, and then the short down. Now, and that this happens a lot and you'll watch how this just keeps going down. So then this three pulls back, becomes a four, a longer fifth wave, pulls back up. Uh, this was a three, pulls back up for the four, back down, comes back up. It didn't go higher than this here. But if you look at that supply zone that I put earlier with these little purple lines, we touched that supply zone. That was off the three minute. It's also on the five as well. It's on higher time frames too, guys. We pull back out of there and there's your, uh, a lot of people will say, well, how do you decide inside of there where to take the exit out? Well, look at the cyan line. The cyan line never crossed back over here. So you never would have took your short. Plus down here, we're yellow, where it's like it's telling you undecided, undecided. The cyan did cross over right here and dropped seven points um, out of there. It did give you a signal to go there. That, uh, and this all gave you. Now, if you're running your stop loss behind here, that's still a profitable trade. That's 28 ticks. That's still a lot of money. $300. Uh, $300 trade if you protected some of it. Came back up, retested that line again, and then cyan came back out and below your 6-4 moving average. Uh, it's the same exact spot as the other one. That uh, all six reasons to take that going short. Now your stochastic did give you a, uh, an arrow here going up on that one. So you have five instead of six. But that move hit the fifth wave target, pulled back up, ran back down more. So now your fifth wave here became a three with a fourth wave pullback for a fifth wave long. Now this fifth wave has now turned into a three again. We've up, come up and hit the fourth and that's where we're at right now. Now, as of right now, you guys know that we need to do a channel, wave four pullback channel. And if you go underneath my J-Dub Tick Trader profile, you can do the, um, oh, let me try this again. You can uh, watch this, how to set up these channels. There we go. All right, now if you, I notice I did a channel, and let me check the settings just to make sure. Yep, on the wave four pullback, I have it on close. And all my other channels I do, I do on high, low, close divided by three. It's just my preference of them. If you look, we have not broke out of here for a reason to go, like right here was coming out. All right, cyan did cross over right here. Um, you did have a, a line to go, and this was a four at one time. So cyan crossed over. One reason to go short, below the point of control dots, two reasons to go short, below the 6-4 moving average, that bottom red line, three reasons to go short. Bias dots were red, four reasons to go short. Oscillator turned red down here, the green went to smaller, 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 red. Five reasons to go short, and then your stochastic crossover. So you had all six reasons to go short there at 30.43, and it went down. To 3026. So, I mean, that was still a really good move, but then it pulled back again. And you can see the oscillator down here. Your uh, stochastics start pulling up. Your oscillator was getting smaller and smaller as it pulled up. And we, did, we ended up just moving the four from this area here to up there. And let me, let me remove this. Let's do a, because the original way four was right here. So you're going to drop your channel from there to there. So you need, this is another confirmation is taking it outside of the channel. Now that channel was exactly almost uh, to where the bottom of the green, the cyan crossing over. Like I said, I would wait until you're below the six four moving average. Usually when you're below there, it goes. On it, so Jamie, good, uh, great job. Heck yeah, $510 on it, that's super good. 
Yeah, Frederico, that uh, I love TradingView. That uh, it's, I actually was playing around uh, with my phone yesterday and figured out how to all of your settings. For instance, if I do a channel here, all of my favorites are on my phone and I didn't realize that. Um, I can draw any of the same channels with the same settings. Anything that's saved as a default, um, I can do it straight on my phone. It was super awesome. Because uh, then I was able to screenshot it, send it to my buddy and uh, tell him what I saw. Uh, from it. Yeah. Uh, okay. Frederico, I, um, it, I think you were on last week too. Um, uh, Stefan from trading view, um, that is a couple weeks ago. They're working on that, uh, to have a trailing stop. Uh, the, now the multiple screens is in a different, they're going to have like a desktop version, uh, cause it's, it's hard for uh, the Google web browser to be able to control multiple screens because it's in that web browser. So having a desktop version uh, will give you that power to be able to go across. So that is in the works and coming like really, really, really soon. All right. So, yep. Uh, but the mobile version right now is like super awesome. Uh, let me look through my questions here and make sure I didn't lose anything. Where do you get the stop loss line? Kathy. All right. The stop loss on roller coaster. Let me shut off Elliott wave and bits so you can see the stop loss line. And this thing's going to draw a channel because I clicked on it. Your stop loss line is right here. It's this red line. So as this breaks out and it starts going, it doesn't paint the stop loss to over here. So when this candle closes, you put your stop loss, the second candle closed, the top of it's right there. So you put your stop loss right there. As each candle closes, you put your stop loss on the red line above it, directly above it. So each one of these, as the candle closes, you move your stop loss down. Now, you don't have to move it on every single one. You can wait till you know, on a five minute chart, you know, it takes you 25 minutes and paint five candles, you can move it down again. Uh, and you just keep moving it down. And like right here, you moved it down. And when it came up, it stops you out at 30, 40, 350. That's <laughs> Federico. Federico, I was telling Paul earlier, uh, him and I were talking and I said, what I love about Federico is he follows the rules and does not question them. You don't try to overthink it. Um, I have a problem of overthinking things and I, I'm not an engineer either, but, uh, but I do overthink stuff, but it, it's, if you can just like, this is the rules, you follow it and that's it. Yep. Ram, uh, you exit, uh, on uh, roller coaster. You exit at the, that stop loss line there. On Elliott Wave, it's kind of up to you on Elliott Wave. This blue line is the target zone that you're at. And so like on this first one right here, it came down, busted through it and kept on going. Well, obviously you're gonna keep moving your stop loss down. Um, each kit, if you, you've a uh, rule of thumb for a lot of people is when one candle closes, they move it to the top of that candle before. So this candle closes, you move it to the top. And then when the second candle opened, it came up and stopped you out down here. Uh, now me personally, when it gets down to the blue, I move my stop loss like one tick before the blue line because typically it will bounce and take back off uh, as soon as it touches it. Now this one didn't, it just busted through, came back up, retested that zone, came back down and then uh, bounced around in it three times, uh, one, two, yeah, about three times in that same zone and then took off down. Same way with this one. We hit it, went all the way to the end. When we pierced through the blue, then I moved my stop loss to the bottom of the blue. And then depending on how much farther down it goes, I just keep adjusting it down out of there. Now, having both of these indicators now take off Elliott Wave 
and now you know not to keep moving your not to um, take your stop loss off because the roller coaster is keeping you in the move. So if you noticed with the Elliott wave, you took a nice fifth wave move, but you also didn't stop yourself out for too much early profit because roller coaster was keeping you in it all the way down. Uh, Ram, it just kind of depends. Uh, I mean, oversold become, can become just more oversold. Uh, if, if it is, uh, let me see here if I can turn to blow this. Let me blow this up. When it's like this straight up in the air, then you usually stay in it. If it curves over, as soon as you get that hook, uh, hook or a V, you know what I mean? Then, then you start looking at something different that may happen. And like this has got a roller coaster move to go long right now at 30, 49, 25. Now your stochastic down here, or excuse me, your oscillator has gone lower, 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 lower on red in your first green. Your red, red, red went to yellow, 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 red, one red, yellow, yellow. Um, you're going to look for and your, uh, you've got your stochastic crossed over over here with your arrow um, going on here. Now let's look at bits and see where we're at in bits. Okay, bits got you in right here at 30.43. So it got you in six points ago um, from there. And that confirmation of that, as soon as it crossed over, it went from red, 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 red. It gave you two yellows and then that yellow after it. Um, Bits will typically get you in a few points earlier than roller coaster on it. Uh, when the two collide together, they're pretty darn accurate. Well, let's let's watch this one right here on this five minute 30, 49, 50. Let's see if this thing takes off or not. Let's turn on a volume bar just to see. There we go. All right, this is awesome. Then we got a, a trade. While we're in class. Kathy, the yellow dots uh, are indecision. Red dots are, these are higher time frames, like 60 minute, 240 uh, time frames. They are, boy, look at this move ticking off. That, so red is short, yellow is indecision, and green is long. So that without you having to go over and click to a higher time frame chart, you can just look at it and the bias uh, is telling you uh, the average of those charts is indecision right now or whatever. All right, so now we got a, a gray bar is low volume up and green is high volume up. Um, and we went up from 49 to 53. So there's 20 ticks right there in a few minutes. Uh, now I told you, I don't usually, I wait until the first shelf so right now, I'm gonna. I think this thing's gonna come back, retest it, and then take off. So I wouldn't go long until 30:53 if I hadn't already taken this. That if I took this, I'd move it one tick up, and it's probably gonna come back, and it would stop me out there. But my next entry is gonna be 30:53.25 if it bounces through there. That uh, all, it's not a signal to go long or short, uh, Ika. Um, that's just telling you that stochastics has crossed over, uh, I believe it's 80 and 20 is what that, let's see. Yeah, 80 and 20. It's just telling you that it's crossed over and it's okay. Uh, that it's more likely gonna go in that direction. It is not an automatic take a long or take a short. So make sure you make sure you write that down. And guys, don't forget, I know the video is, uh, can be a little overwhelming or boring, uh, but you gotta watch the boot camp, man. Uh, it's super important uh, to watch that boot camp. Paul goes through so much stuff on that boot camp, uh, and a lot of these questions you ask about are in that four hour boot camp. I, I wouldn't, I can't imagine somebody buying the indicators and not watching the boot camp and trading live money. It's like, you know what I mean? Like if you're going to put your money at risk, you need to put the time in to learn how to use the indicators better. 
I have a ton of videos uh, on my JDub Tick Trader profile here on TradingView. And then I have a ton of them on uh, Paul's. They're all over our Trade the Fifth website as well. Okay, so there's our shelf, guys, right here. That 3053.25. That what I would do is put uh, what is a limit order right here at 3053.25. That uh, I'm gonna or 50, one tick above it. That's where I would have my entry right now because this may pull back, jack around in here, retest it because we bounce through this six four moving average. Typically, it comes back and retest it before it takes off. So let's keep an eye on it. You got a higher. Um, oscillator green a, a bigger bar on there um we haven't got a green dot yet a green dot is uh going to give us uh like more confirmation for a long on this right now now we're in yeah we're in paper trade so let's do let me take oh. watch this all right uh, let me look through the questions here. And I have live stream uh, uh, questions on one page and questions on the other one. Yeah, oversold can be more oversold, Stan, or overbought can become more overbought. Uh, okay, so this is there. I would be in this one because it just touched it, the 50. That. Let's just, just for the hell of it, let's just put in a trade on here. Okay. I got a 15 tick stop loss, which is one notch below this line right here. Now I was telling you, once it takes off, I typically will move my stop loss one tick up. That I want to see it at least four or five ticks ahead, and then um, I'll move it up to protect it. Let's see, it would have stopped me out right there. Stochastics is still going up. Our bias dots are here. We're good. Let's just look on the higher time frame where we're at. Now see, look, we have a new uh, roller coaster move right here at 3053.75 on the 15 minute time frame. Don't have one on the 30, where are we at on the hour? Okay, on the hour, we are still, we were on um, from that short earlier, we're still in a roller coaster move down on an hourly chart that is on there. We're we hit the bottom of that channel, so we'll see if we pop up right here. This is gonna be heavy resistance at 3059.50, because that's a, a channel, center channel line and the top of the 6.4 moving average. So let's go back to five. I don't wanna sit here and babysit this trade, I wanted to go through and show you guys on setting up a new chart. I'm gonna leave this right here going. Let's do, I'm gonna do a, let's do, let me just do a roller coaster. I had this one earlier. I think I deleted everything off of it. No, I didn't. All right, let's do a new layout. All right, if you don't have anything on your chart, up here is your time frames. And if you look here, I'm gonna uncheck all these stars. And I'm gonna put one. In there for now. If you look up over here, I have a one minute and a five minute. And so you can put your most used time frames that you have over here.
Uh, dread, um, I'm not sure what you mean is red on the top. That means go short. Am I correct? Um, if you are, are you talking about red up here? Or are you talking about red on the roller coaster? Okay. Yeah. This is, yes, this is a, uh, this is a short going down. Typically, I wouldn't take a roller coaster move on, if the overall trend is down, I'm not going to take the roller coaster move down. Now you watch, we're going to come back and retest this thing. And it'll stop me out. Uh, typically, you're not going to take one off. Now there's moves that happen on these. This is going, uh, I don't know what it'll end up painting up on here, but when it goes on the fifth wave move back down, we will probably get another roller coaster indicator to go uh, short on this one, on it. So you're still, bias is still there. Stochastics is uh, leveling off right now, which makes me worry just a little bit. We can drop down up, but let me go over here on your time frames. Uh, I don't want to get too wrapped up in this one. It'll probably stop me out. Uh, get a little on here, uh, but I want to go through on how to use your chart up here. So if you trade a lot with say uh, one minute, two minute, I don't like one minute charts that much, but three, four, five, uh, 15, 30, 196, and I use one hour, four hour, eight hour, one day, one week, one month. Now, if I click out of here, you'll notice now right on this top of this chart, every single thing, all those time frames that I just touched, uh, highlighted the star are now on here, which is really, really nice. Now, same way for, let's go over here to this blank chart. If you were going to add your indicators on here, you click indicators and you're going to go down here to, and this is something kind of new. This, um, they have candlestick patterns uh, that are now new. Uh, these are free that are in here. And well, I have the highest uh, one. I don't know um, if it comes on the lower ones, but invite only scripts, uh, is if you subscribe to our indicators, you're going to get these over here. And to add them, you're going to add all of them to your chart. So you just click them, each one of them once. And they show up in your chart. All right. Well, now that these are all in here. Now, uh, one thing that you can also do, same way with this, if you highlight the star, for your favorites, you can just click up here and anything you have that is your favorite will be in here. So you don't have to go looking for it. All right, so once they are on the chart, you can move them down to give you more room where you can see. Oh, it's a little too small right there. There we go. here. All right, so I got my bar count. I got, I can see my bias dots. I can see where we're at. Now, if I want to save all of these for templates, I can click template. All right, the current ones that I have on here right now, uh, I have them in here as W5T full suite. Now, yours wouldn't have this on here. All you'd have to do is click save indicator template. You can name it. W5T Suite, click Save. I'm not going to click it because I already have it. And then it will show up over here, which is W5T Full Suite. So let's go on here and delete all of the W5T stuff off real quick. And I'll show you why in a second. So everything's off. Instead of you having to hit indicators and you have them saved in your favorites and you got to go click one, two, three, four, five, six, seven to put these all on here. Now all you got to do is just click this W. Boom. 
They're all on there on one click. Uh, RAM, they work on all time frames that uh, you can typically find a bigger move uh, like Federico did this morning on uh, those three and five minutes. You get the early entry on them. Uh, you can usually find it uh, on those that now I like looking at higher time frames. I'm going to be on a 15 minute to an hour or more. Uh, that's how I run mine. That's on there. Okay, so now we have these on here. So your time frame up here, we've set as defaults. We've set any indicators that you have. So even if you pick uh, from the public library, there's tons, tons of stuff on here. Uh, they have a built-in volume profile that's really good. Session HD, click it on. Uh, you can see over here, and I think there's also, you can move the volume profile over if I remember right. Yeah, you can do all kinds of stuff uh, in here. I'm gonna take it off because we're concentrating on trade the fifth stuff. I'm gonna turn off bits and just stick with our roller coaster that's on here. It's almost like one tick from stopping me out. There you go. Now watch, we're gonna retest this blue line the six four moving average, and then it'll take off out of there. Now, typically, you're not going to uh, you're not going to take a short when the trend is down. So let's turn Elliott wave on. Since we know that it's going down, oh, I turned Elliott wave off. Sorry. Let's look at here because this was the three. You can just I can just look at a chart and I can see that this is a one, a two, a three, a four, and then this was start of the fifth. So this has been the four. So, but just to be on the safe side, I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna do it over one of these ones right here, which is twenty thousand seven thirty. Gonna go to the sprocket. And you notice it's set by default as one, 20,730. One is going to count whatever time frame you're on. It's going to start from candle number one. So we're at 20,000. So it's going to be crunching the numbers 20,000 candles ago. And you don't want to waste uh, the power uh, computing that from 20,000 candles ago because it's not going to matter. You're going to pull out of here. So being on a five minute, let's turn off roller coaster because we've already got this moved down. Now on your regression channels, you're gonna click your trend where it says trend line, click it and you have all these different things you can pick from. And any of them, same way with this, you can click the star next to it and it will make them a favorite over right here. So I can click I don't have to go over here and click this. It's already right here. And then this drop down menu right here, I can move this anywhere on the screen I want. I just keep it over here so it doesn't cover up my bar count. But I can drop down and say, I have channels with different colored backgrounds. I've got all kinds of stuff, but we're gonna do the wave four pullback. And you just click the bottom of the three and the top of the four. And then you can right click that channel, click settings, and you can change it to close whatever you want in there. Close, I think, is the best one for this. Uh, style, I, I just do it this way. Like I can go in here and lighten up that channel where it's even uh, it doesn't show up as much. So it's easier to see. And I can take that. Down. Right there, I can make the lines thicker if I want, really thick. Whatever you want down there, uh, you can, if I only want them uh, to go a certain length or if I want to keep them going, I can do that. And then you click template down, save as, and you can save this as whatever you want. This is a wave forward, so you type in here, wave forward pullback. All right, I'm gonna hit cancel because I already have it. Click okay. 
And then down here, anytime you click this, anything you save will be on here. So like I like to do channels in certain colors. Uh, Jamie, it, right now, TradeStation still does the dot D charts that come in very handy for training the day session. Uh, no, uh, Jay, we do not have any new ones uh, on TradeStation that I just quit using it. Uh, that, I mean, we still build them for it and still do the support on them, uh, but I don't do any live trading uh, training videos on them anymore for those. Um, I can do on the future. One of the main reasons is I'm a Mac user uh, and I like something that works on a Mac uh, natively where I don't have to use boot camp or, you know, start my computer back up as a Windows computer and then none of my Apple stuff works. Uh, but if you do already have the indicators on TradeStation, you can buy a second set for TradingView. Uh, yeah, I was going to say you have boot camp on, on yours. Uh, you can get a second set for 40% off. Just send me a uh, private message and I will I'm gonna put my email address in the um, chat box there so you can see it all right and look at this this thing's gonna bounce off that 6-4 moving average line like I told you it's probably gonna do and it's probably gonna take off now uh, So yeah, you can get a second set on those. I just, I like TradingView, it's easy to use. I can grab my phone. The chart looks exactly the same, like whatever I've saved on uh, the workspace, it's exactly the same on my iPad, my phone. If I log in, uh, I can be on somebody else's computer and log in and it's not like a lot of the other platforms where everything is saved on that specific computer. So if your hard drive dies, you lose everything you got. Uh, someone steals your computer, uh, your kid breaks it, uh, whatever it may be. Sure enough, man, look at this, it's taking off. Uh, see, what did I tell you? This was a good lesson right here on not taking this trade until it came back and retested the 6.4. I told you, I said, we're gonna come back and test that 6.4 moving average. And sure enough, we did. probably should have moved my stop loss below there, below that 6.4 moving average. It would have kept me in that thing. Okay, so we've gone through putting time frames on here. We're running out of time. We've got about 15 minutes left. How to load your indicators on here. And then we have gone, we went through earlier on grading the trade, on drawing your channel on your fourth wave pullback, using your bias dots, using your oscillator to see where you're at, using stochastic, the whole nine yards. Now also on drawings, if you want, there's a thing in here called price range. And I have different settings in here and the 5 p.m. Globex opening range is at 1700 and that is this candle right here so i just drop it down there it's in purple i know that that is a opening range now now that's well hold on that was five minutes let me take that off let's give it 15. opening range 1700 that's that red candle. And all right, if I would have had, um, I always draw lines on the 15 minute opening range. I like the trade going uh, out of it or, in, or out above or out below. I would not have actually taken that trade uh, knowing that we are right here on the top of that opening range. Uh, we're like exactly right on it. On it, but let's go back to that five minute and see, you can see we're getting resistance right here and to the left. 
almost everything has failed in this area right where it's at. I don't trade the Globex session, guys, and one of the reasons why is because there's no freaking volume. Look at this. See how it's great, 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 and then nothing. That it's um, you gotta when it's trending and going. Let's see. Yeah, Stan, that is awesome. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, if you want the suite, just let me know and I'll have Damien, uh, get, well, I have to send you a special invoice for the 40% off uh, for the second set um, for it. That TradingView is my, that's the only platform I use now. I don't use anything else. Um, for Now we have coming up, uh, TradingView is, is working with, uh, right now they're working on .d charts, multiple monitors, um, trying to think. Now they did have, let me look on here. I saw on my phone alerts, create an alert and all right, they've added these. These are new. This was one of the things that I wanted. I've never used them before. I noticed it on my phone yesterday and I haven't messed with it today. You're able to hit an alert on the channel. Now I don't, I haven't played with it yet to figure them out. Uh, but one of the things I wanted was if you're moving outside of the channel. So for instance, if you, this say wave uh, five out going down, you wanna be outside of this channel. Well, we might go quite a ways and then it pops out over here. Uh, I wanted it to be able to uh, give you a, an accurate time to get out of it or a accurate alert instead of just horizontal uh, number. It needed to be a number that can incrementally go up or go down depending on the channel. And like if I don't want any alerts off the center channel, I only want to take upper channel trades or lower channel. Like if it's a, an uptrend, I only want to take trades when we bounce off the bottom. I mean, look at this channel. Uh, we bounced off the bottom. Now you wouldn't have had, we drew the channel right here. So when we touched this bottom one right here, it wicked back in 3036, ran up to 3051. So 15 or 60 ticks uh, off there. But I don't want to sit here and babysit this chart. So I could set an alert on the bottom channel line. And when we hit that bottom channel line, uh, this will send you to your trading view app it's going to send you an alert uh, and it'll say alert log. Uh, obviously I don't have one in here, but it would tell you, it would beep your phone saying, Hey, channel's been touched on 60 minute, you know, whatever it is. Kathy. Awesome. That, uh, let, make sure you let them know, uh, which, if you want it for this platform here, and I'm happy to do a personal zoom with you guys. Um, to help you out. I mean, anybody on here that knows me and has known me for the last year or more, um, you guys know that I'm the most giving person in the world with my time. If I'm busy, I'll tell you. Uh, but you know, I've done these, I've done personal sessions at one o'clock in the morning for people that are overseas. Uh, I've gotten up super early. I've stayed up super late. Um, I've done lunchtime ones for people that just don't have time, you know, because of their job or whatever. Uh, I'm very, very flexible uh, to help you guys out that anything I can do to help, just reach out, okay? All right, we are almost at the very end. I'm gonna play, I'm gonna play around with these channel alerts. Uh, I don't know if they're completely up and going yet because they haven't given out a notice yet. So I'm gonna have to play around with those on how to do it. Let's go. All right. So another thing that you do on your, on your way, oh, let me take, delete this on your way for pullback. One of the things that you do down here on your oscillator, and I'm going to make this a little bit bigger is you're going to do a, a 90, 140 pullback on your oscillator. You want to make sure 
and this is your fib retracement click template which you don't have this but i have it right here 9140 i'm going to show you on here you're going to go from the wave four pullback which you can see your mouse which is right here right there you're going to take that and drag it down to the high of the wave three which is and get this thing to drop. Come on, mouse. There we go. I'm gonna put this center line on here and then drag it quite right. I'm gonna move it back down there. I've made it in kind of in a tater spot for right there. Okay, obviously the crown up you see right here, we did not violate the 140. So there's actually number seven uh, for your reasons to take a fifth wave. No, Bill, I do not. Um, Paul and myself do not do options. Uh, I And Paul will tell you the uh, same exact thing that I will tell you. I'm not smart enough to do options. <laughs> I can't figure out delta, gamma, uh, I, I, I tried it. I took the class at OTA and about halfway through it, I said, I, I don't even care about finishing the class because I'm not going to do options. <laughs> it's too much work. Uh, now, from what I get, Theta, there you go. That uh, I, I know you can leverage yourself and make a lot of money and not risk as much. And maybe I need to learn it one of these days, but uh, it's, it's too much work uh, for me. Guys, we're winding down here. I got four minutes left, but um, this five minute trade, um, all right, this thing, I kind of like the way this looks right now. We'll see what this next candle does right here. Let's turn off Elliott Wave for a second. And I'm gonna show you. We're coming back down on, all right, we have the center channel line for this wave four pullback, but it's also an uptrend for this wave four pullback. We've gotten that, uh, what was it, 50, was it 52.50 is where I got in earlier? Yeah, 52.50. All right, we've came out of that again came back and retested that opening range and it's getting ready to take back off uh possibly down here let's see still got yellow for your bias um showing negative on your volume now look at your stochastics down here came down touched that 80 line and it's curving back up again that we may get a nice little move out of this keep an eye on this guys and see what it does uh i wouldn't uh i wouldn't put a lot of uh a lot of stuff into it because we know that we are on now it could get violated that uh but we know we're on a elliott wave down so we're looking in the 30.12.50 to 30.05 um that's what we're looking at. Now, go to your four hour chart and what do we got? We're below one hour. Yeah, your one hour, you're still on a short down. One down and to stop you out would be 30.69 on a one hour. And we're over here on the five minute 30.69 is, 3069 is way up here in the red, uh, which still would not violate the rules on the Elliott wave for that move back down. So going up to that higher time frame, that 3068, 3075, that may, uh, this hour long may keep you still in the trade for a further push down without stopping you out. Uh, Rand, they all, like for me, all three of them work together and you can see how I went through on grading, um, grading the trade 
on. Now, I didn't go through tonight because I didn't have enough time. I always uh, frame my charts with channels to see where we're at and what's going on. Like this is an hour channel. So I'm gonna take it from here to here. All right, we are playing inside of that channel. And if you look, the and the software is not built around channels. I just like channels. Um, they're very accurate of telling you a trend. And that's where we're at right now. It's staying inside there on it. But um, so the question, answering that question, all three of them go together. It just depends on the day. All three of them work together really good. Uh, if you're going to do anything, I would say, I'd say roller coaster is, I like roller coaster a lot, like a lot, lot. Um, let's go over here and just pick a different symbol that I haven't traded. So nothing's on. Uh, let's just do RTY. Okay. And let's turn off roller coaster and turn off Elliott wave. Okay. So I'm going to go on say a 240 and because we have a new contract let's go over here to the existing one all right here is the longer term 240 so let's put this one i'm gonna do this one in red so i'm gonna go from the low to where we're at right now and look how accurate that is that's on there, okay? Now I'm gonna go down to an hour. You scroll back and now I have an hour chart, but I have a higher time frame. So when everybody always tells you, you need to trade on a higher time frame, you need to trade on a higher time frame, that is true. So looking at this red uh, channel, I know that's a four hour chart. So we're on a very high time frame, all right? Now we can go down to 15 minutes. I don't know, 15 minutes I can usually still get the channel. So I keep going backwards, there we go. And then when you do that, click this reset button and it'll take you back to where you're at right now. All right, so we are at the bottom of the channel. Now we could bounce like this off the bottom like we've done and then take off back up, or we could bounce out of this thing and go farther down. That uh, I mean, technically, this is a fresh zone right here. So 1348 to 1341, that's a fresh uh, demand zone right there that hasn't been hit. So this may end up panning out and going farther down. But so the what I'm saying on that is click on roller coaster and you can find some very nice moves. I like roller coaster off of channel lines. Um, I just think that they're super freaking accurate off of the channel lines. Uh, and look at this one. I mean, this one was massive uh, out of here. 1354 and look where it stopped. It ran out of juice at the center channel line at 1454. That's a hundred points. That's a thousand ticks. That's a $5,000 move on one contract on RTY. Uh, now I don't take trades in the middle of the channel lines, but when you get a roller coaster move inside of there, you just kind of go backwards and you look to see how many times that it's been trending or not. And like in here, you've had too many hits and misses. You had one good one, one little one that hits and misses. That's on there. Go down to a five minute. Now this 240 chart is not going to show up. Uh, we'd have to go, I'd have to, I can make it show up. I just got to keep dragging this thing backwards for like so long until it picks up the channel line and it, it will take forever. Uh, typically what I do is I will go to an hour and there's that 240. If I draw it on an hourly chart, then it's easier to find on a five minute. But what I'll do is I go back and find these roller coaster moves. Like here's, here's a nice one on a 60 minute. Uh, 
right off that center channel line and go up. This one took you down to the center channel line, back up here, and then the massive, massive, massive move right there from 1497 all the way down to 1353. On there, nice big move right there. And this one's still in. 1404 is the stop out on a one hour roller coaster move, which got you in at 1432 and took you down to 1367 on this. Uh, a lot of times you can get in earlier on some of these big moves. I like going up to the higher time frames just to see what's going on. Like this roller coaster move got stopped out on a 30. So an hour will be a little bit higher. So I like to go through and check them out and then see where they're at in relationship to those channels. Because obviously I'm not going to take a, I don't want to take a short when we're so close to stopping out on this one. Uh, now, if we retest it and it takes back off, you know, then you can look at take like this one is a perfect example. We're at the bottom of the channel. It, you got an alert to go short. I'm not going to take that because we're at the bottom of the channel and it's been super accurate for three months. So, you know, we haven't gone really far outside of that channel line very many times. So when I get an alert to go short, I'm not going to take it that it's just not out of there. Now this one took you to the channel line and then kept on going and it's come back up and touched the channel line. Yeah, on uh, on the roller coaster when it pops up, I, let me see if I can get this to show us a new move. Um, let me see if I can get one that's like brand new. Four minutes. Let's do this four minute one, and then you can see it. Okay, when it first happens, all it's going to paint is this orange line and a green line. You're not even going to see the body. It's just going to have an entry and a stop loss. And then when the next candle opens up, if, if it's uh, still meeting all the requirements for it, then it paints this orange box. This is the suggested stop loss. That does not mean that's where you put your stop loss. You got to look at your trading plan, your account size, and go through the numbers of what works for you in your trading. Uh, and then your entry is at that green line to go. Now, there's other things that go with it. Uh, that's where I was saying all three indicators come in handy because then you can look at your bias. This says uh, right here, uh, you know, for going long, but it's red, 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 yellow. Now we did get some greens right there. And now it's been solid green for five, six dots uh, that are down here. Uh, which is 20, 25 minutes. It's, it is raining like cats and dogs outside right now, by the way. Uh, so I, and this goes back to my same deal as I wait until that first shelf is painted before you're going to take it out of there. Uh, Cause it typically will come back. I don't like trading at night because of this low volume like this roller coaster is really, really good when it's trending. Uh, and we have a, a long ways. Like this one here has popped off winter, winter, winter. Now this was a small winter, but still good. But good winter, good winter, good winter, little one, little one, little one, good winter, good winter, good winter, little one. Uh, mediocre. I mean, that, that one paid off. Uh, good one. That one never activated. Uh, if you see this, let's see here. Let's blow this one up so you can see it. This one right here gave you the, the entry line to go short right there. It only went like one tick out of there. You're not going to take that because everything up here is green. Your bias dots are green. Your stochastic's pointing up. Uh, just not, uh, not enough reason. The crown out of here is like super low. Nothing's really changed. Plus you're in. Uh, if you were looking at this, trade right here you can draw a channel from to where you're at and look at that channel you're not going to take a, a short trade coming out of there because you're at the bottom of the channel 
and look what it did. It wicked out just like it's supposed to, and then it took off and went up. Eventually broke out of there, but that would have saved you from getting into that one. But there, this one on the four minute time frame, it's been popping off nice, you know, 25 plus tick moves. Uh, this one, 14, 15, it went to 1383. So, I mean, you're talking six, 600 ticks on that one. They, these are big moves, guys. That uh, five bucks piece. All right, guys. Well, I need to use trading or not to uh, <laughs> stand. I'm glad that you're blown away, man. It's uh, it's the wave of the future uh, of trading. I describe trading view as if Apple built a trading platform. It, it's just user freaking friendly. Everything you want is one click away and you can easily turn things on and off. You don't have to delete them off your page, anything like that. You're welcome, Federico. Thank you. Uh, you're a badass. And I, I, I'm giving you a big uh, thumbs up. Uh, keep it up. I, I'm really proud of you. Yeah, as I say, now, Christian, I will tell you, when you're on your mobile uh, device, the mobile app for TradingView does not have the trading, uh, like, open and close on there. You have to actually log in to TradingView through your uh, uh web browser and then your um, uh, stop loss line and stuff like that's in there. It's harder on the phone. I mean, I have a, a I don't know, 11, six plus or 11 plus max or whatever it is, the highest dollar one they have for Apple. But I use my iPad and the iPad like works phenomenal. Yeah, trade station is one you can put on there, Jake, but keep in mind, uh, on those, the issues that some people have of it locking up, it will still lock up. It's not trading view locking up. It's the, uh, uh, the, uh, platform through trade station that, uh, and I'm not knocking trade station. I love 9.5. Um, it's, I learned to trade on it and I, I wish that they, uh, could make it smoother, uh, like it. Let's see, but yeah, there's other, uh, like there's AMP trading. Uh, let me see on here, guys. There is, let's log out of this one. Here's your different ones that you can uh, hook up. AMP, Oanda, TradeStation, Alpaca, Tradeavate. Tradeavate's a good one. Um, I haven't opened an account with them yet. Gemini and Forex. Uh, those are the current ones that you can trade. Uh, you can hook your accounts up to it. But all right, guys, I'm going to stop sharing on there. I appreciate everything. You guys have a good night. Uh, we had a good, uh, good meeting. We ran a little bit over, but I hope uh, it helped everybody. Thank you, guys. Have a good night. Bye-bye.